Okay. So my name is Tara Lee Mays. I'm the manager of arts for Boys and Girls Clubs of Western Pennsylvania. And my job there is a big one. I'm trying to build um, a, a comprehensive art program for the Boys and Girls Clubs. So I'm going to build visual arts, culinary arts, musical arts, performing arts, every kind of art. We're going to start at the create a foundation. Believe it or not, uh, a lot of these programs didn't really exist in these older organizations, the, um, you know, as a, as a formal program. So, anyways, today we're going to do culinary arts with Cyber Reach School. I'm very excited. This is my very first virtual teaching experience, okay? We are going to make um, Vietnamese spring rolls, okay? Fresh spring rolls. When somebody says fresh spring rolls, that means it's kind of not cooked, it's not fried. It's made with rice paper, okay? Let's see if I can show it to you. Oops, oopsie. Okay, so these containers, when you buy them, are a little tricky. So you have to use a knife to break the seal, okay? Um, you always want, when you use a knife, you always want to push it away from your body. You never want to, like, pull towards your body, okay? Um, this is the proper way to hold a knife. I'm not sure if any of you have seen this before, but a lot of people will hold their knife like this with their finger on the edge. And that works pretty well like when you're home at home, but if you're going to go into the culinary profession, which some of you might, um, you can actually take your knife and hold it with your fingers like that and wrap your whole hand around your blade, okay? So that you don't lose control, okay? You have total control of that knife. When you do the one finger thing out here, you lose one finger of control on your knife. You just need to really have a sure hand on your knife, okay? Especially the sharp kitchen knives, the culinary knives. You know, they're like, they're sharpened and honed and they're like razor sharp. So any little slip and you'll get a cut. So you want to always have control, okay? That's good to know. The thing about fresh spring rolls is this. This is rice paper. And a lot of people, kids will laugh at this because it looks like really weird, you know? It looks like this hard, clear, semi-translucent paper. And it has this really cool pattern on it. But if you go on YouTube, which is wonderful, you guys have YouTube. When I was growing up, we had no internet whatsoever. So there was no YouTube. You know, and there was a phone hanging on the wall, so that just dated me. How many? You can probably guess how old I am now. But so I was explaining how these are traditionally made, these rice papers. So they take the great big bamboo, f sort of flat, roundish um, vessels, and they put it down into the water deep, and then they bring it up through all that cloudy color. And that cloudy stuff is rice starch and rice particles. And that lays on the bamboo and then they dry it or cook it or heat it somehow. I'm not sure of that part, but and then it comes out like this. And then that's why you have like this pattern on it. Can you guys see that? Okay. So um, it's pretty cool. Also, just to, when you see this process of how to use this, it gets really soft and pliable. Cake decorators will take these rice papers and artists who use food products as artwork, I do, uh, you can actually lay this on wax paper and make shapes and fans and waves and you can add food coloring or acrylic paint and it actually gets hard again and you can make art out of rice paper. Alright, so we have peppers here. These are sweet peppers. Alright, you just buy them in a little bag like this. You can get them anywhere, okay? I like using the small peppers versus the great big peppers because if I'm teaching a bunch of different classes, I might only need like four or five of these peppers, okay? So I can use one bag per, for two classes, okay? Um, when you are cooking and teaching in the culinary arts, um, a lot of things like a lot of things like that you have to think about convenience. When you're working in a kitchen, they'll have, you know, massive amounts of vegetables and they'll buy in bulk. So that's completely different sort of scenario. So there you go. 
This is the chopped peppers. I just chopped some peppers. Okay, those are going to go into the spring rolls. We're going to have a whole medley of things. All right. So this is a whole bunch of fresh mint. And it has been cleaned. It's very affordable. I think this one was less than two dollars. Okay. So you want to have some fresh mint for the for this, or you can use uh, cilantro. To make spring rolls, the key ingredient in a spring roll, especially fresh spring rolls, is um, lettuce, okay? Whatever lettuce of your choice. I like, personally, I like to use butter, butter lettuce, um, but I brought some spring mix, which is also very nice, okay? And I'm going to clean a handful of this before we even go any further. Now these, when you buy containers like this, they say that this has already been cleaned. Okay, I never believe them. Okay, and I would suggest that you go through your lettuces and clean them. Okay, you can use a, a salad spinner. You can just use a little strainer, which I'm going to use. Um, because if you don't clean your lettuce, you know, there might be like a little bit of silt or dirt, especially down at the end of the lettuce leaf. There might be a lettuce piece that's gone bad. You ever seen a piece of slimy lettuce? You know, you don't want to eat that, okay? And there also might be slugs. Slugs are nature's gift, you know, and they love lettuce. So sometimes you'll see a slug in there. So you need to clean your, your vegetables. Now, so I got my lettuce. Here's another ingredient we're going to use. This is called tofu, okay? This is a, a bean curd product, okay? So it's made from, I'm, I'm sorry, a soy product, okay? Uh, which is soybeans. And it's made into kind of a, a bean curd. And then it becomes tofu. And I always use the firm tofu. But this is what it looks like. Sorry. Right here. And you can even make your own tofu. Let's go back over what we have so far. We have the rice paper. We have lettuce right here. We have peppers. We have tofu. Now, here's another thing we're going to put into our, our spring rolls today. You can make a spring roll with any protein you like, like I said. For if you're vegetarian, you can use the tofu. Just the tofu and the vegetables. If you like seafood or meat, we're going to use... Um, some crab, some artificial crab stick, okay? I usually get this at the Asian market in the freezer section, and they're already made and wrapped individually. They're about this big. You can see that. Okay, you can also use shrimp. You can peel some shrimp, you know, and then when you wrap the spring roll, you put the pretty parts, or you might put the shrimp on the outside or the crab on the outside so people can see what's in there. This is kimchi, guys. This is a Korean national, this is a, like a Korean national product, okay? I know how to make my own kimchi, and I can give you guys that lesson too. But this is a fermented cabbage, Napa cabbage product, and it has um, red pepper flakes in it, and it's all, it's a little bit spicy, but it's a flavorful spicy. It's not like eating Tabasco sauce, which is more fumey. This has the red pepper, the Korean red pepper sauce put uh, into this. And sometimes they put fish, oysters, things like that in that. This does not have the fish part in it, okay? But this is just a very good thing. It's good for um, everything. Gut health, they refer to, they talk about gut health. This actually helps me digest food, okay? It's just a very tasty product. I need to back up a second though and tell you guys a little bit about why I'm into my Asian cooking um, and other cultural cooking. I am, a, I am from South Korea. I was born in South Korea, but I was adopted to the United States when I was 10 months old. And my family is from rural western Pennsylvania and they were, we, lived, we grew up on a half farm. So we were country people. And my mom would go to the farm nearby and get like fresh milk from the cow with like cream on top, you know. And we would butcher our own animals and we would do all that and that was great. 
the one thing that she didn't realize and that I also didn't realize and learned about later was that I was semi-lactose intolerant. So for when I was young, um, I always had a stomach ache. I had a stomach ache for my whole young life, okay? And nobody back then talked about lactose intolerance, you know, not being able to eat a lot of dairy. Um, so I grew up that way, no problem. But when I moved out and then went to college, I went to Slippery Rock University for the reason, all the, the primary reason was they had 70 different exchange programs and I wanted to go back to Korea to find out about my heritage. When I went back to Korea, guys, here's what happened. I found out that I was lactose intolerant. Most Koreans, I would say at least half, are, okay? And when you go to the Korean market or the Korean store, you don't see, like in the United States, you don't see walls and walls of different kinds of milks and cheeses. Their supply of dairy is much smaller in variety than ours because they don't, they don't drink it. They don't eat a lot of dairy or drink a lot of dairy. They do a lot of rice products. They do a lot of everything else but dairy. Um, here's the thing. I found out that that food works for me. That that Asian food and Korean food in general makes me feel better on a regular basis. So I, I, so I learned a lot in that experience and I hope that as you guys get older and you try different kinds of food or if you know a little bit about maybe some of your family's culture or ethnicity or location that you try the food from that you know from that part of you so we have everything we need now okay we have rice paper we have mint we have freshly cleaned spring mix a lettuce we have tofu and peppers sweet peppers peanut sauce ginger sauce and crab meat imitation crab meat okay so and last but not least kimchi for that little, for that little, for that little spicy kick so here we go, we're ready to learn how to assemble, all right? So I'm gonna take my rice paper, which is curling up a little bit because it's, it's picking up the humidity in the room, okay? So you're gonna put that on your cutting surface or your cutting board or a piece of wax paper or a glass plate or a foam plate. You do not wanna make these on a paper plate. They will stick, okay? So it has to be something that you know you can remove it from easily. I'm going to take my spray bottle. There's two ways to do this. You can either use a spray bottle or you can have a big pan of water nearby and you can pass it through the water a couple times. I like using a spray bottle. It's just more convenient for me. So I'm going to spray both sides of the rice paper. We are making fresh Vietnamese style spring rolls. There's a lot of different things that you can do with rice paper. It's a lot of fun. So while this is getting wet, even now it's getting wet, okay? It's getting softer, okay? We're gonna start building. First, I'm gonna put some, oops. First, I'm gonna build a little wall of lettuce. Can you guys see this? But you can see the lettuce here. We're gonna put that near the end of the rice paper, okay? Toward me, all right? And then we're going to take our noodles. And usually when I do noodles, I didn't do it now because I'm at home. I would soak these, I would coat these with sesame oil so they don't stick together so much. Okay. Then we're going to, the next line is going to be your noodles. All right. And you can use different kinds of noodles if you don't want to use the Chinese um, ramen. You could use... Um, and you can use the uh, top ramen, you can, you know, the, the oodles and noodles, those, the cheaper noodles, you can use vermicelli, angel hair, spaghetti. On top of the noodles, I'm going to put a crunchy vegetable. 
So what I like to do is mess around with my textures. I like soft against crunchy, you know, soft, medium, hard. So this is the harder vegetable, the peppers. So I'm going to put a couple sweet peppers in there. I'm going to put a nice piece or two of tofu in there just for a little addition, okay? And then I'm gonna put two sprigs of mint. So I'm gonna show you guys what this looks like so far. There you go, can you see that? Mm -hmm. All right, so then I'm gonna take my peanut sauce. All right, and I'm just gonna put a little, couple dollops there, one. I'm using two instruments, two forks. You can use two spoons or whatever just to get a little bit of that in there. And then, before we add our crab meat, here's, oh, kimchi. Yes. You can't forget about our kimchi. We're going to put two little pieces of kimchi or one thick piece of kimchi in here. This will work. Right here. Before we add our protein, which is the crab meat, the meat protein. Now, if I was in class teaching this in person, I would be most likely wearing gloves. You know, I would not be using my own utensils, all kinds of different things. But because this is virtual, it's totally different. So then I'm gonna take my, I'm gonna take my wrapper. If you can see me lifting up this end, I'm gonna take my wrapper it's very soft now, and I'm going to roll it over that side, okay? I'm going to pick this up to show you a little bit better. So I took the edge, and okay, I rolled it over. Now I have a, a rice paper wall right there, and that's where I'm going to put my crab. If I was using shrimp, that's where I would put three beautiful pieces of shrimp, because that's what people are going to see. You want people to see what they're going to be eating. Okay, so there's that. And then we're going to tuck like a burrito. Pull on the ends. And roll it. And then you end up with sort of this beautiful thing. Okay. Yeah, can, I have to, uh, can you eat rice paper? Mm-hmm. Yes, this is totally edible. And this is very soft. Look this. Yeah. So now I'm gonna take my rice, my roll, and you can just eat this like this. You can just stick this in your mouth and eat it. But I'm gonna to try to be a lady, okay? And I'm gonna cut this in half. So you wanna take a nice knife. And you're not gonna like chop it. You're gonna very gently, well maybe in this case we're gonna chop it. Never mind. I did, I did have to chop that one because it's hard to saw through this, okay? So now I'm going to let Pittsburgh Pat try this and give me his opinion okay so go ahead and give me your opinion mm. <laughs> it's for mm -hmm. pat just eat it up no it's edible right yeah. yeah it's totally edible question in the chat they're asking about are there any sauces you'd recommend to go with sprinkles yes so thank you sometimes i can't see the chat from this far away but I'm gonna work on that for next time. We're gonna figure that out. That's okay, we're here to help, no yeah. problem. Cool, so I, so we made the peanut satay sauce. We made like a chicken peanut satay sauce with, with peanut butter, um, soy sauce, and um, sriracha. So it's a spicy peanut butter sauce. But for those that are allergic to peanuts though, you can use just plain soy sauce if you want, or you can use, um, this is a ginger sauce. It's very liquidy. You can use that. There's also another sauce that I, these are commercial sauces from the Asian market that I like from the Asian market. It's called a miso sauce. It's a sesame product. Um, and that is delicious with these, okay? I just so happen, every week, guys, I teach two other culinary classes. So I try to line up everybody to do the same thing. So I actually had some of that, but it got used up in my last class. And before that class, I had bang bang sauce. So you can buy this stuff in the grocery store. It's called bang bang sauce. You can use, basically, you can use any sauce you like. Yeah, but it's all delicious. But the point of this spring roll, guys, is it's light. You know, it's easy to make. 
you pretty much can, it's like making Mexican or a burrito. And that's where the connections come in, guys. Everything I cook usually is connected to another culture as well. Can any of you think about what another kind of roll or wrap might be from another culture besides Asia? Let's see. Burrito, yes, for Mexico, Latina. Is there anybody else that have one in their mind? Huh? Tacos from Mexico, yes. Burritos, tacos, enchiladas, all of those from Mexico. Yep. Yep. There's China, there's egg rolls. Okay, so when you go to the store, there's lots of different rolls, things that you can roll it in. There's sushi maki, which is seaweed rolls, rice rolls. Um, in Europe, they make a lot of rolls with meat. It's called, um, what was that called from Germany? Um, Roladen. Roladen, yeah. Roladen. Um, there's just so many different kinds of rolls, and it crosses all cultures. Like when we do a dumpling lesson, you'll learn about the dumplings from all over the world. So there's, there's, every culture makes a dumpling, you know, um, so it's pretty cool. The next thing I want to talk to you guys about, too, is potential, okay? So you can, the things that I show you in these lessons, I want you guys to think, because there's no hard and fast rules to cooking. If you want, if you see how we made this and you can find a way to use these same ingredients together, but maybe change the shape or maybe change, make it into a pouch or like change any of it up, but using the same ingredients, that's called potential. That's using your creativity. And sometimes when you're growing up, you might be in a situation where you're hungry, but maybe you only have like three out of five of those ingredients. From yeah, so you could make a noodle dish. You can make a noodle dish with those vegetables in there without the rice paper. Okay, you can take the rice paper and just wrap any one or two of these items in it. Okay, okay. sometimes you have a taste for something and you want good Asian food and you cannot find it. There might be something in a Chinese restaurant or whatnot that says that it's good. But when you eat it, it's not as good as what as it would be if you made it yourself. So a lot of times, like I am wanting a certain taste, a certain texture, a certain meal, and I cannot find it for the life of me. So guess what? It's time for me to make it myself. So I mean that, and then I'm totally satisfied because I get exactly what I want. And also, it's cheaper to make it yourself. Yeah. What will we be doing next? I think next week we're going to do um, a rice lesson. I think we're going to do sushi maki, which is rolled sushi. Um, and then after that, we'll go into some dumplings and some hot foods, you know? Yeah. So it works kind of like going from cold and warming up as we go. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah.